Welcome back to my shed. My name is Paul Hopewell. In this video I want to show you what I went through to repair a broken tooth on the cone bull gear. To be honest, it didn't go as I'd intended. To start with I began reassembling the lathe to a point where I couldn't really continue without having to repair something. Providing the head spindle doesn't slop around when it's reassembled, the bearing faces seem to be in very good condition. The wicks, however, were weak and damaged, but I don't see any bad after effects because of this. The gear head is lightly clamped into place at both ends. I did this so that I can align it back up with the gearbox later. The rack is in good condition despite being covered in old grease and a couple of paint marks. Now I'll turn my attention to the back gear assembly. This gear is off the belt driven cone assembly and it's made of cast iron and as you can clearly see there's a tooth missing. To repair it I used a bit of scrap mild steel. To start with I need to hold the gear while I clear out the broken tooth. To replace the tooth I used another technique that I had seen done many years ago. Not to a gear tooth but to a location shoulder. This was also on cast iron. The idea here is to hold the gear firmly and to set the two nearest teeth level to each other before finally clamping. Then, with a 5mm 4 flute cutter fitted in the mill, I touched on the sides of each of these teeth to find the centre of the broken tooth. But to prevent marking these teeth, I wet them with oil, then placed a bit of newspaper on each face. As soon as the rotating cutter touches the paper, you'll notice the paper starts to creep out of the way. Half the distance between the two cutter extremes is the centre. What I did here was to make a 5mm deep slot. The slot was further machined into a dovetail. I planned to make the dovetail as tight as I dared, but I couldn't risk making the two parts fit too tightly together. This risked cracking the remaining casting. That meant that the tooth would have to be held with a belts and braces formula consisting not only of the dovetail itself but glue and a threaded pin or grub screw. This dovetail cutter was made from one of my milling machine boring tools. After making some adjustments it made an excellent single point cutting tool. This is where I touched down to depth using a little bit of paper. I also added another 0.05mm to the depth. That's about two thou. Suds aren't necessary on cast, but I used it to wash out the slot whilst I was cutting. I was on tender hooks while cutting this dovetail as you can well imagine. Nevertheless, I took it very carefully. The dovetail's included angle I used was about 15 degrees. As I said earlier in the video, I used mild steel for my tooth reconstruction. It was a bit of waste from a section of angle iron and it's quite malleable. After sawing the material to roughly the size I needed, I set about milling it parallel before getting on with the dovetail. To make the dovetail I used the same single point cutter. I touched on the top of the material to gauge my depth, then I formed the first side of the dovetail. While at the same depth I made a couple of false cuts so that I could check the fit in the gear. After a few trips back and forth to the mill I found the size that I needed. 
Because I only made short false cuts each time, as soon as the dovetail did fit, it wouldn't be tight enough to do the job I wanted it to do. So as soon as it did slide together, I made a note of the size and backed off by 0.05mm, approximately 2 thou. I machined along this side, but before the cutter completed this side, I added the 0.05mm back on. The end result was that the tooth could be started in either end, but it would be tight in the centre of the casting. Now for the belts and braces. I was going to fit a pin and then I thought maybe a grub screw. I ended up using a combination. I simply ground the tip of a 5mm grub screw to fit into a 4mm hole, drilling the gear through the slot using a 4.2mm drill bit. I followed up with a 5mm tap to form the threads. The tooth was put back in the vise and I drilled an offset 4mm hole to 5mm deep in the dovetail side to match the tapped hole in the gear slot. For the braces it meant gluing the two parts together. Using acetone the parts were thoroughly cleaned. Then plenty of JB weld was mushed into every crevice. I used a G-clamp and squeezed the two parts together, then finally fitted the grub screw tightly into place. I gave the JB weld a couple of days to fully cure before continuing with any machining. Mounting the gear in the lathe was easy. I needed the repair to be offset in the jaws so that the tool would cut the excess material without touching any other tooth until the excess material was flush with the nearest two teeth. Fortunately, the outer round casting favoured this, so I didn't need any extra packing. After machining the front face, I made a start on the outside diameter. As soon as the nearest teeth to this repair started to clean up, I knew that this would be the last cut. I couldn't clean up the back face this way because the saddle would have struck the gear face. So it was back to the mill for a quick and easy setup to end mill the excess material off. That's it for the easy part of the tooth profile. I can't get this gear on the shaper to machine the tender metal pitch profile using my tooth profiling tool. Not safely anyway. So I resorted to another bodge and one that I hope will work well. Firstly show you what I did using a drawing to explain, then you'll better understand the video. This is the outline of my 66 toothed gear. If I zoom into the top part, then draw a section representing my gear teeth as they would be at this stage, you will also notice two lines roughly representing vertical faces on some nearby teeth. It doesn't matter which teeth, only that the vertical aspect of each tooth is important. Let's say that the line now represents the cutting edge of a cutter. If the gear is indexed round to the cutter's set position and a cut is made to remove the excess material, you will end up with one facet of the gear's tooth. Repeating this process once more, you will end up with two facets on that gear's tooth. By repeating this process in the opposite direction should complete the tooth making process. A little bit of hand fettling should get rid of any sharp edges. The setup process for holding the gear is quite straightforward. Setting the gear in the right position to be able to index it needs a little explanation. Here is a sketch of the gear as it is now. I used the square end of a pair of clamps. I set these clamps to support the gear just above the table. I made these clamps butt up to the gear in such a way as to prevent the lateral movement between here and here. So every time the gear is taken out and indexed to a new position, the gear must sit firmly here before reclamping through the ball. 
Here's where I set a 4mm 4 flute cutter against the first tooth that lined up with the cutter. As soon as I've indexed the gear and locked it down, I raise the cutter to provide a 2mm depth of cut, then sent it on its way. Oh. Now, after all the work I've done so far, do I want to do it all again? Will it make much difference? I decided to carry on as if nothing had happened and set it on its way again. Following the process that I showed you in the sketches earlier, the first facet of each tooth I piecemealed my way down to the zero point. The zero point on the depth of cut was set to a point that prevents the back of the cutter from scratching the next nearest tooth. I removed all the excess material from the root on both sides of this tooth with a small file. It might look easy, but guiding such a small cutter along various nearby teeth to find the most suitable facet to copy was difficult to see in such a small space. But after releasing the milling machine's chuck by putting the gearbox between gears, I could freely rotate the cutter next to the tooth being copied. On both sides of each tooth, the second facets only needed very little material removing, so this facet was always cut in one hit. There we go, job done. Now we can have a really good look at it. Well, you can clearly see the repair, and here you can clearly see where I cocked up. I've fettled off all the remaining rough edges and that's it. Yeah, this tooth is a bit monted, but it is a tooth. If I got this lathe with the tooth like it is, would I have repaired it? Well, no. It should be good enough as it is. All that remains for me now is to reassemble the rest of the machine. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.